Thanks for tuning in to Double Tap here on YouTube. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe and notification bell right below. In this clip from a recent episode, Stephen Scott and I discussed the challenges of taking the perfect selfie when you can't see the screen. Enjoy the clip. The latest tech. People love iPhone, and it's an important part of our daily lives. Interviews. We see far too many products that come on the market that you look at that you say, was a blind person ever even consulted for something like this? Accessibility. The most interesting thing over the last couple of years is the emphasis on gaming uh, and accessibility. This is Double Tap TV. Hey guys, thanks for joining us. I am Stephen Scott. And I am Marco Flalo. Thank you guys for being here. Stephen, I've got a really important question for you that mm -hmm. sparked my imagination when Google announced, of course, their Pixel 7. And later on in the show, we're going to talk about the guided frame feature that they unveiled on screen with Molly Burke, a really, really cool feature. And, and that guided frame feature allows people to very easily take a selfie of themselves. But before this feature existed, and for people not on an Android device, how on earth did you, if you even tried, taking a selfie of yourself? Well, you know what? I remember the days when applications used to exist. There was one I remember years ago called Selfie X, which was the very first time I ever did this. And it was kind of like a, a, a kid's type app. You would hold the phone up and it would be able to identify you on screen and it would say, smile, and it would take a picture and it was all very, ah, ha, ha, you know, and left a bit, right a bit. Oh, you're showing your bottom or whatever it was. All very silly. And um, it was it was a bit of fun, right? And that was great. But that was the beginnings of something. And then later, uh, as I started to get into using voiceover on the iPhone, I learned of the camera guidance feature built in to the iPhone camera app. Do you want me to show you in action? Because it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, I'm really curious how this works because, you know, guided frame, I understand how that works and we're gonna demonstrate it a bit later on. But I'm curious on the iOS devices. I mean, how do you keep yourself centered? How do you frame yourself so it actually looks good? Exactly. And it's not that dissimilar, right? So I've got my iPhone here with me. I'm gonna go into the camera app. So let me bring this up here. And I've got my camera app. Now you notice first off, I need to choose my camera, zero people. And I'm going to hold it off to my side here. One face centered. One face centered. And I will find myself to the take, take picture, picture button. button. You can hear me. It says take picture. And that's it. I've taken a selfie. That was actually a lot easier than I thought that might be. Absolutely, right? And, and isn't that the greatest thing about this? This is so simple. And it was telling me there, face near center, so I know exactly my face is in the center of frame. I don't have to worry about that. I can press the take picture button. And that's it. Now, the guided frame feature adds some extras to that, and we'll get into that later. Now, a question for you. Is that feature on by default on the iOS device with voiceover? Yes. You just turn voiceover on, and it's just there? Yeah, and it, it goes further than that. I mean, it can even... A lot of people use the camera for different things. They use it for taking pictures, obviously, selfies, all that kind of thing. But it's also really useful for identifying the area around you. It will, it will pick up on things, certainly pick up on the number of people that are in a room. It's really handy if you walk into, say, a crowded office and you're looking for a group of people standing at the water cooler, you can kind of just navigate around with your phone and it will tell you, oh, group of people of, say, five or six people, and you can just gravitate over to them. The problem is, though, Mark, if they move away to the other side of the room, they don't want to talk to you. <laughs> now, this feature, because I know when Seeing AI from Microsoft came out a while back, this was one of the cool features that they called still in beta but so what came first like if you look at the chronology of this was it seeing ai then it came to ios and now we have guided frame because is someone following the leader here uh well I, I think certainly the camera identification feature through voiceover has been there for a long time seeing ai came about as a project with microsoft interestingly just a, a hackathon event a lot of people don't realize this it was a guy who had an idea and he went along to one of the microsoft hackathon events he worked at microsoft and you know, just a bit of time spent on a, a project he wanted to work on, and suddenly it became what is now Seeing AI, an incredible story. And it shows Microsoft's commitment to accessibility, right? Now we're up to the point where Google have finally got this feature. Some people saying, you know what, you're years too late here, Google, but if you are blind and you have a Google phone, this is great news for you. It means you can take those selfies, you can take those images, and it's done in a fun way. I think for some people using the iPhone version versus the Android version, you'll notice a difference, and that is, personality. There's a bit of personality on the Google side. What is it still that cold voiceover experience that you would get using voiceover in any other app? You get the information, you double tap to activate, and that's it. 
Uh, some people might prefer this this newer way of doing it. What about granular controls? Like, are you able to use some of the features like, you know, uh, focus shifting and things like that, the cinema mode on the video side of things? Does voiceover work as easily with those features? Yeah, so you'll notice, for example, at the bottom of the screen, often on the camera app, you'll have options for photo, video, portrait mode, all those different things. Those are all fully accessible. You can use all of them. Of course, the success of how good it is bearing in mind it is a picture you're taking, is dependent on the phone and what you're getting from that device. So for example, if you're taking your own picture, you're trusting that phone to be in focus, you're trusting it to be on you properly. And if you're in a crowded room of people with lots of people behind you, that could be a problem. If you're on your own like I am sitting here, holding that phone up and it says phone in center, then I know if I'm in portrait mode, I'm gonna get a really nice portrait shot. I'm gonna get that really nice bokeh kind of flavor, you know, that blur in the background is going to look really good. I'm going to get that. But a lot of it is based on trust, because obviously I can't see the result. You know, a blur to me is every day. So, you know, I'm not going to be able to tell how clear that image is. But that's why I've got you, Mark, because I can send it to you. <laughs> well, so here, here's a question that being said is when, when a new phone comes out, one of the reasons that I buy a new phone is because the camera's better, it's improved. So when I'm capturing moments like my kids growing up, you know, it's, it's a good selling point for me. It's a good, unique selling proposition for me is the camera on that iPhone or whatever device I might be getting. Is You, you normally argue that the camera is not that important, but when we're talking about this, the camera does play as an important, if not maybe even a more important role when you are low vision. Yeah, and I think we also have to remember that there are younger people out there, and Molly Burke is a great representation of this, someone who's younger, who's into you know Instagram, who's into TikTok, who's into all these new social media platforms that are coming out, you know, someone who's really at the forefront of that, and someone who wants to be you know, in amongst it, and you know, in the fashion sense, in the, in the culture sense, and all of that. And you know, someone like myself, who's less bothered about that, partly age, partly down to my own experiences growing up where I didn't have access to a lot of this, so therefore don't see the need for it. I mean, I grew up without Facebook. I know kids, shocking. There was a world before Facebook? Yes, there was. And actually, we all survived. Um, but th th this is the interesting time. We want people to be able to get access to all of this. Now, whether it's something I would personally use is irrelevant. The fact is there are people out there who can benefit from this, who can really enjoy these features. And why shouldn't they? That's the point. It doesn't matter whether you're nine or 90, you should be able to access the same tools as everyone else to do whatever it is you want to do, be it take pictures of your food at dinner so that you can you know, post them on Instagram as some people may well do. Do people still do that? I have absolutely no idea. You're saying that in a somewhat disgusted tone, but we'll, we'll, I am. we'll, we'll push that aside. <laughs> Let's get into Guided Frame. Let's get into that video from Molly Burke over at the uh, Google Pixel 7 unveiling. After a quick break here on Double Tap TV. You're watching Double Tap TV. Get involved. Follow us at Double Tap On Air or email us feedback at doubletaponair.com. Double Tap TV will be right back. Thanks for tuning in to this Double Tap TV video. If you want to get in on our holiday gift guide giveaway, head on over to ami.ca slash double tap or visit doubletaponair.com. Thanks for watching.